Hi, I'm Rachel, and here I'm going to be interviewing Lorraine Heath. Hello, Lorraine. Hello, Rachel. How are you doing? I'm doing great. That's great. So we're here to promote a book of yours, The Dirty Scoundrel, and I was wondering if you could please give us a synopsis. Well, it's um, The Last Wicked Scoundrel, and <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> that's embarrassing. No, that's all right. And it's actually the last story in the Scoundrels of St. James series. And he is a physician who, um, see, I'm working on another book right now, so I forget what this one is about. <laughs> um, he was raised on the streets, and he's um, fallen in love with an aristocrat, a uh, widowed duchess. But uh, there's a secret in his past that prevents him from really getting involved with her. And uh, her past will come back to haunt both of them. So it's just kind of a fun story. Right, right. So this is the last one. Are you going to miss all your characters? Or are you excited to go to the next series? Um, I'm going to miss the characters, but um, I am looking forward to the next series. And it, uh, it'll start in March. The um, Scandalous Gentleman of St. James. And so it's going to pick up the children of the series, The Scoundrels of St. James, um, and then their children will be in the next series. Okay, so I'm so not going to leave them. Right. So right. I'm not going to leave them behind completely. Okay, good. So you're still going to have them. I know authors are just like in tears. They're like, but I've worked so hard on these characters and they're going to be gone now. <laughs> uh, so that's great. So they're historical romance. How much uh, did you learn from writing these types of books? I learned quite a bit, uh, and particularly with this series, because the premise of the entire series is that these characters were the children that Charles Dickens based Oliver Twist on. So I did a lot of research about child criminals, um, mm -hmm. the way they were punished at the time, things that the children, how they lived on the street. And so it was, um, it was just an eye-opening experience for me to know that, you know, children were sent to prison for snitching a handkerchief. Right. Just, it was, uh, it's an incredible time. I would not have wanted to live there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with all those rules. But so I know that some authors also go to like museums or to haunted houses or something to also uh, get information on that time. Did you do something like that? Unfortunately, no. I didn't get a chance to to go and travel for this series. There's uh, always other ones. <laughs> there, there is. There is. <laughs> so, yeah. how long have you been writing? I started writing seriously uh, in 1990, and actually this year, uh, 2014, will be 20 years since the release of my first novel. Oh, congratulations! So. Oh, That's thank so exciting. You. Thank you. So, since you've been writing for so long, how has your writing changed throughout the years? Um, I think it's probably gotten a little bit more uh, complex, hopefully. And um, it's, um, I started out writing Texas historicals. I live in Texas, and I uh, love Texas history. And then when that market kind of dried up, I moved to writing stories set in England. Uh, my mother was British, so I kind of had that background, that heritage that I wanted to play around with. And so um, I've just kind of evolved as the industry has evolved with uh, different settings. Right, so what is your favorite setting or what's a setting that you wish that you would go back to? Um, actually right now I'm really enjoying writing a story set in England mm -hmm. and um, although I do have some set in Texas that I would like to tell perhaps at some point. Right. But um, there's just what I like about the Victorian period, which is what I write, and that's like 1837 to 1901, is that if you're looking for a dark story, a dark setting, then you can go to the beginning of the Victorian period. And if you're looking for something a little more light, a little more modern, 
then you can go to the latter part of the Victorian period. And so you have this broad tapestry that you can use within this whole framework of this time period and your research is never, or I never find the research boring because it's always something a little bit different just depending upon which part of the Victorian period you're researching. Right. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. So when it comes to the Victorian era, you write England, do you also write for other countries like America as well? I, I wrote, um, it was during the Victorian years what I wrote in Texas, but Texas was not oh, okay. really part of, considered Victorian it. Right. It was more Old West. Right. No, that's nice. Well, because no, I was actually asking because I wanted to know, like, what are some differences that you had to learn between the Victorian era here in America and in England? Well, what I, one of the things that I found <clears throat> interesting was um, during the Victorian era, a lot of American women went to London to marry aristocrats. Mm -hmm. And so, because of that, I did have to research the um, the New York area because that's where there was um, it was more Victorian-like in New York and in the East as opposed to being in Texas. Mm -hmm. So um, I researched that to see how the women would how the American women would be different from their British counterparts. Right. And I was able to weave that into the story and. Uh, while I was writing Texas set stories, I did a series where I brought three second sons of English lords to Texas. And that was when I first dipped my toe into writing something with an English feel to it because right. it gave me the chance to research the English aspect where, where I wasn't dependent upon an English setting. And so um, that was when I really began to enjoy doing the British to dabble research. into other yeah. yeah okay I see so let's ask I'm gonna ask some questions now about um, not just your book but about you in general so what are some of your goals as a writer um, my goals as a writer I I like to um, make my readers smile oh. I, like to, uh, <laughs> I like to make them cry so um, I want to, to give them a, a good story that they can enjoy and uh, give them characters that feel real to them. Right. Well, what books have most influenced your life? Uh, the first uh, book that I, I think that probably influenced me the most was Morning Glory by Laurel Spencer. It was the first romance novel that I ever read. Um, I read it in 1990. I knew that I wanted to be a writer, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to write. And I didn't think I wanted to write romance. I had never read a romance. Hmm. And when I read that book, I knew it was the kind of story that I wanted to tell. So that had a, a, a big influence. Right. Um, I actually was not a big reader, which is unusual for a writer not to be a, a big reader, but once I discovered the romance genre, then I became a rather obsessive about That's it. That's hilarious. <laughs> You're like, oh, this is very interesting. I know. When I got into the romance genre as well, I like ate up all books. It was actually Gina Showalter. Um, it was, I actually thought it was a young adult book. <laughs> so when I was reading it, I'm like, what is this? And I got addicted. So I completely understand where you're coming from. I don't I don't understand it. It just got me into reading. Um, so let's go into some uh, Twitter questions. Okay. There is somebody that says, what is the day in the life of you? Oh, day in the life of me is so very, very exciting. Um, <laughs> I generally... Um, I sleep late, mm -hmm. and when I get up, I have a cup of tea, and then I sit down and start writing. I'll write for a couple of hours, and then just kind of, oh, 
piddle around in the afternoon, do different things that need to be done. I uh, usually then will write again late at night. Mm -hmm. um, I'll spend the evening hours with my husband, you know, watching TV or having dinner or something. It's not really very exciting, which is why I write stories. <laughs> so, since you write every day, um, do you have like certain goals like this day I'm going to write 2K words, this day I'm going to get this chapter done or something like that? I, I, my goals are usually a, at least one scene, a particular scene or two or three scenes. Um, I don't really go uh, with chapters or page counts or word counts. It's just I'll have a scene that I want to write that day or sometimes two or three scenes and so um, it'll be getting into that scene and sometimes I'll start out um, reading, uh, you know, doing some research beforehand. Most of my research though I do after I've written the story so that I know what information I really need to focus on finding the answers to. Mm -hmm. So um, that'll usually happen during the revision as I'm revising, I'll start doing my research and looking for the answers. So my next question, it, there's, it's a Twitter question, but I kind of want to ask a question before I ask the Twitter question. Okay. So you write young adult and you write on the romance genre. So is it hard for you to go back and forth or is it just like an easy like, oh, okay, I'm going to write young adult now. That's not a big deal. Um, actually, I think because um, I write the historicals in third person and I write the young adult in first person it makes it easier for me to switch back and forth between the two genres also the young adult tends not to be as um, as involved mm -hmm. uh, story-wise as um, the historical, I don't have to do a lot of research on the young adult. I do some, even though I write contemporary uh, young adult. So it's kind of like taking a little vacation from the um, historicals. And I think it helps to keep um, both sides of my stories fresh. Because right. I can go back and forth between them. And so each offers me a little bit different, a little bit um, something different that I'm writing. So I don't think I get too stale. Right. No, that makes sense. It makes sense. So now the Twitter question is, what is your favorite age group to write in? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> A little difficult there, isn't it? It is, because each one of them brings, I think, something special. Um, I like writing for the adults but I also like writing for the teen audience. Um, I especially like getting letters from my teen readers because they always use lots of exclamation marks. <laughs> and everything is awesome and that's, that's a lot of fun to get their letters. So, um, yeah, I really enjoy writing for both. Great. Oh, that's great. No, okay, so one more before we get into Would You Rather Okay. So one more turn of question, and this is by Stephanie. In your opinion, which cities, international or domestic, have the greatest lovers? <laughs> oh. Toughy there. <laughs> <laughs> that is. Well. Hmm. Since my experience is limited to Texas, I would have to go with any city in Texas, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a very interesting question. <laughs> okay, so now it is time for the Would You Rather. Oh, am I back? You're back. Okay. <laughs> it, the, the screen went blank, so I don't know if you saw anything. Um, it like refreshed. So anyway, would you rather, it goes like this. I okay. would say to you, Lorraine, I would say something like, would you rather eat apples or oranges <clears throat> every day for the rest of your life? And then you have to pick apples and oranges. But this is literature edition. So the first one is, would you rather 
live in the world of Hunger Games or Divergent? Oh, I Divergent, I think. Divergent. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know. You know, I think I would pick, like, the second district of Hunger Games. I don't know. It was tough for <laughs> me. Um, so, would you rather fight next to Hermione Granger or Harry or, or Katniss Everdeen from Hunger Games? Um, I would go with Katniss. Katniss. Would you re rather read a book that is written poorly but has an excellent story or read one with weak content but is written well? Oh, Probably written poorly but an excellent story. Alright, alright. Would you rather have, who would you rather have as a child? Harry Potter or Hermione Granger? Harry Potter. Would you rather write novels where all of the characters are women or all men? All men. All men, really? Yes. <laughs> are they easier to write? Um, you know, I always, my stories in my mind are always the hero's stories. Hmm. Um, and so I just... Yeah. I enjoy writing from their point of view, even though I, I know I romanticize that they were really thinking. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, I like I like stories with a strong hero. Nice. All right, all right. And then the last, would you rather is would you rather only write your books in trilogies or standalones? I would rather write them in trilogies. I like spending a little bit of extra time with the characters and getting to know them better, especially by the time I get to the third book. Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. You know, I feel I feel like you know authors really have like a relationship with their characters, and I think that's great. You know, it's always fun to see that. So we'll go back to Twitter questions. One of them is, "I love all your lords, especially the Prim Book Boys. Who's next?" Uh, next is um, tomorrow is the release of uh, William Graves, who was the last scoundrel in the Scoundrels of St. James. And then the next series in March begins with um, the Duke of Lovingdon, which is um, the little boy in um, Between the Devil and Desire. Do you have any release dates for those? Um, it'll be uh, February 26th. All right. So, what do you do in your spare time? In my spare time, I go to movies, I watch TV, I travel, um, and um, do some research. Mm -hmm. So, who designs all of the covers of your books? Uh, my publisher, Avon Books. Uh, the art department takes care of the covers. I'm really excited about the uh, book that comes out in September. I can't show the cover yet, but uh, I got a sneak peek at it today, and it's really pretty. Nice. Do you ever get to meet the models? Um, I don't. I have not had that opportunity. Um, so. Oh, maybe in the future. Maybe. I don't know. It would be fun. It would be like, hi. <laughs> Um, so actually, I'm going to ask you about teams, if you have any. Are you Team Edward or Jacob? Oh, I have to go with Jacob. Are you Team Gail or Peta? Um, Gail. Are you Team Simon or Jace? Simon or Jace? Mm -hmm. Is that from Divergent? No, nope, that's for the Mortal Instruments. Oh, okay. Simon or Jace? I'd have to go with Jace. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. I I did Jacob and Gail for the win. I am so glad. Cyber Five. Cyber <laughs> Five. <laughs> Very glad. Um, okay. So, 
Next one is, which writers inspire you? Oh, is this, this is, I, I thought you were, it's not an either or. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we're done with that. We're done with teams. Um, I, I love Sarah McLean. Uh, I just finished reading uh, No Good Duke Goes Unpunished. Uh, really enjoyed that book. I'm looking forward to her last book in the Rules of Scoundrels series. Um, I enjoy reading uh, Addison Fox. She writes contemporaries. Um, let me see. Uh, Loretta Chase. I love her historicals. Mm -hmm. There's just there's so many authors that I enjoy reading. Uh, Gina Showalter. I like yeah. reading her. <laughs> Her darkest series. Um, so there's just nice. I probably shouldn't have even started listing because I'm going to leave people out. So <laughs> that's okay. I, I understand. I understand the the chain of authors you're talking about. Um, so, what advice would you give to your younger self? To my younger self, I would. Advise advise me to start reading sooner um, <laughs> and to uh, start writing sooner and to have a little bit more faith in uh, my ability to, to tell a story and to actually sit down and do it instead of just thinking about doing it. Right. So we'll do a Twitter question. Okay. She says, can we hope for any more Westerns? Please, please, please. <laughs> Oh, begging you, Lorraine. <laughs> Three pleases right there. You know, I hope so. I hope so. Um, my publisher's releasing, uh, reissuing two of my westerns this year, one in June and one in December. And so I'm hoping that um, we'll see some, some nice returns, um, not, not returns, but some nice numbers on those books. And so... Uh, we keep hearing that um, there's an interest in westerns, but we kind of need to to see that people are buying westerns again. I think. Right. No, that makes sense. So, what is the hardest and what is the easiest thing about writing? The hardest thing is um, actually sitting down and writing. Um, and um, just uh, coming up with um, the story, writing the story, making sure everything goes together. The hard that, that was the hardest thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the easiest thing is, um, you know, the easiest thing is just... Um, Sometimes it's, it's the writing. Again, it just some stories um, seem to come together a little easier, and sometimes there's just maybe in a book there's just a particular scene that just really kind of spills forth and keeps me um, mm -hmm. uh, excited about the rest of the story. So it just depends on the day. Right. Right. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's a good answer, good answer. And uh, so now we're going to play our second game. Are you excited? I am excited. <laughs> okay, it's called fill in the blank with the first word that pops into your head. Oh. So example is I say, my favorite food is blank. And then you have to fill in what your, fa or what your favorite food is. Okay. Quite easy. Okay, so... When I first sit down to write, I blink. And it ha oh, oh, by the way, it has to be one word. Oh. Ha ha ha. <laughs> I'm evil on this. So when I first sit down to write, I blink. Oh. I sigh. <laughs> you sigh. Okay. Sigh. So. With this, with this, I also forgot to say this. When I say blank, you have to say the first word that comes to your head. So if you think spaghetti, you have to say spaghetti. Okay. <laughs> or something I, I, really random. I have to admit, I am not a fast thinker. It's okay. So, uh... <laughs> it's okay. Well, it's, it's a fun game if your mind wanders a lot. Because if I ask a question, you're like, I didn't do laundry. Oh, laundry. 
and then that's your answer. Okay, so the second one is when I write, I have to have blank. T. When creating a new character, I want them to have blank. Problems. All the great mysteries have to have blank. Murder. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't like I don't like a book when it has blank. Unhappiness. I can't live without blank. Books. Nice. And that concludes our game. <laughs> yeah. That was fun. Yeah, it was fun. I wish I had more, but maybe next time. So, for your own reading, do you prefer ebooks or traditional paperback or hardbacks? Um, actually, I kind of go back and forth between them. I, I like the convenience of the ebook. If there's something I want to get right away that I can just download it and I've got it and I can read it. But sometimes I do miss the actual holding the book and uh, reading it and having the paper. Right. No, I, I agree. I mean, it's like at first it's really hard. You know, because you're just so used to that paper. And then you have to, like, swipe your finger, and you're like, what is this? <laughs> but you get used to it. So this concludes the interview, and now we're going to get to the giveaway part, which is super exciting because everybody loves giveaways. So up for grabs is the first and last stories of the Scoundrels of St. James, which is... In the Bed with the Devil, and then the novella, The Last Wicked Scoundrel. And this can be either ebook or print version, doesn't really matter. It's international, too, and it ends on the 13th, which is next Monday. And in order to win, you have to do two things, three things ish. One, you have to subscribe to Ray K Books. So when this chat is over it will turn into a YouTube video and you should subscribe to that channel and that will enter you Two, leave a comment any comment really doesn't matter and three extra points is to follow Lorraine on Twitter and if you do follow her on Twitter leave in the comments what your username is so I can verify so thank you so much Lorraine for this chat I had a blast well, thank you, Rachel. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. So, again, your book comes out tomorrow, your new book. Tomorrow. tomorrow. Congratulations. And, uh, yeah, so I will see you guys later. Thank you so much.